Obviously, this is a prequel, and I was wondering how much can be challenging and at the same time uh, exciting for an actor and actress, of course, to that to go get into a world that is already existing, already iconic. You know the outcome, but not you know the origin. So I want to ask you this: Where did you start building your characters? I, I got a um, I got one little kernel of an idea of where Teddy had come from. And 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 so I with that and I'm not going to give away what that was, but what it did was it really helped me create a world. I, I wrote a little biography of him, of how he had left home when he was 14 and got to London and had to survive by himself and how he had then met Stan, who is played by the brilliant Paul Kay. I think that the. the, the the wonderful aspect of, of going backward in time and being able to do flashbacks too is that we get a blank slate to sort of create something that we know leads to point Z, which is, you know, obviously in my case played by the brilliant Ian McShane. But I know that I don't have to be that to begin with. I, you know, if we are lucky enough to get a couple more seasons, that, that will be something that we're heading toward. But at this point, it, you have to have elements of it, but you're also um, allowed to play. And, and I think that that was something I really leaned into the, the chance to do. Yeah, for me, I, I mean, I started with the, by watching the movie. I'd seen it when I was in my late teens or early 20s and hadn't really watched it since, but it still kind of lived in, in my mind somewhere. Um, so I went back and watched the film over and over again and just kind of studied this performance. And it's, you know, it's kind of impossible to put your finger on why Ben Kingsley is so miraculous in that film. He just is. But um, I tried to initially use that as a, a template, not in an effort to mimic him or imitate him, but just to be guided by him initially. Um, and then once I kind of felt like I had that perf his performance in my head, I parked, I parked that to the side and then my focus went into the script. And through working on the script and just like drilling certain scenes and trying to live and breathe that part for myself, then I managed to find a freedom with it that was out with my impression of the original film, out with that characterization. The character of Cecilia Logan does not appear in the film of Sexy mm. Beast. She's an invented character for this prequel. Um, I was very drawn to the idea that uh, in the background of Don Logan's context is a very powerful woman who has created this um, space of control and danger, uh, but also fierce um, ownership. That she's there to protect him and to, uh, to stand alongside him and be survivors of their familial situation. I watched the film a lot and I really tried to get into the rhythms and cadences of Ben Kingsley and some of his gestures um, and tried to incorporate those with some of the language, of course, which is taken from the film and put into Cecilia's mouth. I want to ask you something about the context because it's true that it's a prequel, but I guess he created the kind of new world because it, it's set in the 90s, we can say the early 90s, and the, the context is really strong. We can say from the first scene, you understand where, where you are and in which period of the time. So I want to ask you something about this. Do you feel the same? Because it's really true, the context and did you have fun even enjoying, you know, all the dress, the hairstyles and the music? The music of the show is brilliant. I, I had a lot of um, collaboration from the, um, the um, hair and makeup designer, Sam Marshall, and the costume designer, Kathy Pryor, who really collaborated to create the image of Cecilia and took their inspiration for the hair from the, um, the 90s pop icon uh, rock set. Mm. And then Kathy, the, the costume designer, was really leaning into the kind of aggressive femininity of Cecilia, who really knows that she's uh, a, a woman. So putting me in, in tight leather skirts and, and leather coats and dresses um, really helped me find the kind of, um, uh, the, the boldness of, of that woman in the, the vividness of that decade. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the, yeah, the costumes and the hair and makeup absolutely help, as, as they always do, but particularly in this. And I think for Don, I imagine he opens his wardrobe and it's just the same <laughs> white shirt on that shelf, the same grey trousers and the same black boots. 
and you know all his underwear is the same, which Cecilia probably irons. Um, and there's this sort of meticulousness to his look, and this. I think there's this thing. I mean, his one of his biggest fears is humiliation. So he's never going to go out and wearing something outlandish. He thinks if I wear these clothes, I'm safe. There's nothing anyone can. He thinks there's nothing anyone can slag me off about. Um, but essentially, he just looks like a bus driver. I mean, I remember being out in Spain with James in uh, episode four, and both of us would be we'd be out on location, and locals would go up to James, who looked like a who looks like a movie star in this, and ask if he could um they could have photos with him, and often ask me to take the picture as I'd be standing next to him dressed as Dom, and someone actually thought that I was his driver, so it was quite liberating to go incognito as James's driver. <laughs> I uh, I I landed the day I landed to come to to work. I um, Kathy met me, and we went straight over to Academy, which is a very famous. There's two like great big, amazing sort of dress wardrobe houses in the, in in London, and Academy is one of them. And and I met Adrian, who's an, a very famous tailor who made um, Daniel Craig's suits in in um, for Bond, and many, many different famous people. And, and he cre he, we sat and created, we looked at cloth, we looked at probably 20, two, 25 books of textiles that we thought would be within Teddy's range and what he would be trying to project from, from just, just from the way that he looked. Um, that was so liberating for me um, um, because, and, and, and what was extraordinary was Adrian made all of the measurements on me, and when the suit turned up a few days later, there was not one thing that needed to be changed. It was just extraordinary. And having that as a template, plus the fact that we had decided that he was somebody who suntanned, and, and it, 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 it was, I had this tan and this hair that were not mine, that, that when I was walking around in you either have to step into that or you or you step or you're intimidated by it but 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 the very look itself is enough that when you're walking around in somewhere like Liverpool you have to step into who you are so even when I wasn't um, being Teddy on set I felt very much like I had a persona of him and it makes you walk differently it makes you hold yourself differently um, so it, it, it was a very liberating thing and then when that suit gets put on top he it's it's like a, a shell of this being that you already have before you have done the investigative work inside 